In Affinity 3, you can generate duplicates of a shape by just pressing the arrow keys, like this. The right arrow key generates these multiple duplicates of that single rectangle. So how to do this? Well, let's just go over here, Rectangle Tool, click and drag. Just create something like this, a very basic rectangle. Press the right arrow key and it will duplicate it. And again, you can just do this repeatedly. Just keep pressing it on the keyboard, the right arrow key. If you want to go down, use the down arrow key. So down, you'll generate those. And you can still continue to resize it and move around. Do not release the mouse. As soon as you release the mouse, this will cease. We'll just do it with the mouse held down. And you can see you can just resize it and continue to press to add additional ones. You may want to remove some. So just go for, obviously for the crossways. I'm just going to use the left arrow key and it will remove them. And I can just do something like that. Also, I can add some more down, but also I can use the up arrow key to remove. Also, you'll notice they're all together. They combine, they're all totally connected. I want a gap. Well, hold down the right arrow key. And again, do not release the mouse at any point. So just hold it and you'll see then you get a gap. Likewise, you can do that with the down arrow key to get a gap again. Now, once you finish that, you can then press the right arrow key and add some additional, and it will respect the gap, and likewise, the down. So you can build up all kinds of different designs, super quick, super easy, using this approach, and then release. Once you've done that, they're all separate objects. You can then manipulate them via the layers panel, just by clicking on one of them, just tweaking it, changing it, add layer effects. Also recolor them, all those sorts of things, add strokes, etc. So let's just, then you can also, of course, resize them all together. Turn them into a group is another option. Okay, let's just remove that. Let's just go to something else, ellipse. Now, before you apply it, you can change the color. So good thing, just go to swatches. And um, you could use hatches, but gradient's really nice. You've got a selection of gradients here. Just select a gradient. Could be a grayscale one obviously it will vary depending on your gradients and your swatches so select a gradient and then now go click and now you can see you've got this gradient in the circle but again right arrow key press that and that will duplicate that and you will create multiple copies across the screen and again the down arrow key and you'll get something like that again you can add some gaps hold down the right arrow key to increase the gap or the left to decrease it, etc. So you can create that sort of design. And then when you're happy with that, you can release it. Now, of course, now you can change the colors, manipulate the colors in all kinds of different ways. They're all independent. Perhaps use the donut tool and maybe with a different design. So let's swatch there, select it beforehand, click and drag. And then again, right arrow key, all the way across, and then the down. However, one thing you can't do is you can't change certain things, you've got different settings and things while you're actively moving this around, while you've got the mouse held down, which is a pity, but you can do it, of course, once you're finished. So with this, just release now. You've got all these designs, but the great thing, if you've got this, this context toolbar here, and that is the view menu, context toolbar and show, you can go here little option here and quite a few of these shapes have got a lot of various presets so just click there with that you've got these options so you can just change it now unfortunately it's, you can't do it while you're actually applying it which is a pity but that's the way it is and you can see it creates that of course you can still continue to manipulate these different designs individually or as a whole okay another thing you can do is and i'm just going to go to another shape now and obviously there's lots of shapes to use. There's spiral tool, really good for creating some really abstract designs. But you go for, say, a star tool. So star tool, create a star. Again, you can fill it with anything you want, maybe a mesh, uh, anything. So press again the arrow keys, something like that. Obviously right and down. So once you've got it, what you can do is release. And now you can go over here and I've got an option here because I've customized my toolbar. But if you want, go to Vector, the Vector Studio, just simply click on there, and you will see here, you've got these options. And you just click this, add 
So instead of the star, you get a polyline. Now it's all combined. So you can just go over here. Let's just go for the fill tool and just apply a gradient to the whole thing. It's one entire curve now, which you can then, of course, go here, move tool, click effects. And then you can go up to say 3D and you can see the 3D effect applied to the entire object there. So close. And of course, once you've got this, you can duplicate it, modify it in countless other ways and much, much more. Limitations of this, unfortunately, it doesn't include many different shapes that I would like. A line, you can't do this with a basic line, which is such a pity, I do not know why. Of course, there is a workaround. You can use the move duplicate feature. So if you wanna create a line design, simply create the line and then just use that. Please check out my other videos on how to use the move duplicate feature, even if I can say it correctly. Any questions, thoughts, please let me know in the comments below. Bye.